I always used to wonder if Oppenheimer was actually a hero or a villain. And guess what? I finally got the answer. Oppenheimer cannot be associated with a hero or a villain or even an anti-hero. He was neither of them. Oppenheimer was a victim. He was the victim of his obsession. He was the victim of his curiosity. He was the victim of his ego. And then he was also the victim of political suppression. Let me just get straight to the point. There are many scenes throughout the entire movie that work as a concrete evidence that Oppenheimer was literally obsessed with the possible outcome of a nuclear chain reaction. And this obsession began since he was a kid, so I don't feel like I need to show you any evidence of that. If you have seen the movie already, you definitely know about this thing. Let's talk about the other aspects of his ideologies and situations that forced him to develop the nuclear bomb. Oppenheimer used to believe that once the world leaders get to find out exactly how destructive a nuclear weapon can turn out to be, they will never even think of developing a weapon like that. Once it's used, nuclear war, perhaps all war, becomes unthinkable. We can't end this war. But how do we justify using this weapon on human beings? They won't fear it until they understand it, and they won't understand it until they've used it. Oppenheimer was given no other choice apart from getting involved in the Manhattan Project. So he was trapped in the greed, hunger and ferocity of the top class diplomats, military officers and politicians of the USA. If he didn't comply with those power hungry individuals, he would possibly end up being dead just like Dr. Jean Tatlock. You and Einstein with your letter to Roosevelt saying we could build a bomb. I guess Germany. That's not how weapons manufacture works. Aren't you more concerned about his discretion out there? We'll have him killed. She took barbiturates, but there was chloral hydrate in her blood. <laughs> Oppenheimer wanted recognition from the world. He wanted attention. He wanted fame. He wanted the world population to believe that he is an extremely valuable individual. Why? Because it made him the most important man who ever lived. It was all part of his plan. But after the bombing on Japan, he finally comes to the realization that all the desires and ideologies that drove him into building this weapon have only impacted the world in the most destructive way possible. He realized that humans are psychological hardwired to become destructive and ferocious. When did your strong moral convictions develop with respect to the hydrogen bomb? When it became clear to me that we would tend to use any weapon we had. He realized that most humans do not even hesitate to get their hands dirty if it's needed to reach their objective. When they've punished you enough, they'll serve you salmon and potato salad. Just remember, it won't be for you. It will be for them. He realized that the so-called title, the father of the nuclear bomb, has only made him look like a villain to the world population. So he tried to wash his hands by promoting peace using the popularity he had on the world stage. Well, he embraced his father's bomb reputation and used his profile to influence policy. And this is why I'm not going to call him a hero or even a villain. He was the victim of his ego, obsession, ideology, and extortion of the US government. I tried to poison my tutor. Did you hate him? I liked him very much. You just needed to get laid. <laughs>